And right now I've got James and John Hello. joining me here at the gig. And uh, welcome. How are you Thank guys you. doing? Doing great. We've uh, this will be our third show tonight, so we're looking forward to it. And once again, like always, Germany's incredible. The response, yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, the other guys were saying that, and it's it's a very very um, good start to the tour. Oh, definitely. I mean, just last night we played, and uh, it was it was unbelievable. It was a, so a sellout, and there was uh, 2,300 people, and I mean, they're just so loud and into it. You know, the enthusiasm is overwhelming. But yeah, we're having a great time. It's going well. Six weeks more to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's quite a long tour away. Oh, yeah. okay. So, um, actually, James, if I could get your perspective on the new album, Awake. I actually asked John this question when we were down at Ronnie Scott's earlier in the show. But, I mean, so much has happened for, for you as people and as a band in the last three years. You know, right. signing a record deal, having a very successful album, now recording this new album, touring the world. Um, how much is a reflection of... Um, how much is the album a reflection of all that in terms of the overall vibe of the record? Um, well, I think that, like anything, uh, when you're going in to do an album, it, the album is it's like a diary of where the people in the band are at that point in life. And, and this album is a reflection of where we were uh, coming from, the experiences from touring with Images and Words, after that, like rushing into writing the material. But everything that we were affected by, like all the people that we met on the road, um, just all our surroundings that we came in contact with. And uh, I think that the album says a lot, has a lot of that set in it, you know, just our experiences and, and just how we've grown individually, I think, you know. And as a band, we became a lot tighter. I think the music is a reflection of that. It shows that quite well. And just the lyrics uh, that's speaking about how we all took it in indi individually and we used it in a positive manner. and. And just our, our whole perspective of, of our situation in life right now. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, image, or, I mean, Awake is a, is a, good, it's a good story telling of, of that, what we're going through right now, or what we went through just recently in the last three years. Because it's been like a, a bloody, uh, you know, a, a roller coaster ride. You know, it's been really, really crazy. Yeah. Well, and as you said, everybody contributed um, the lyrics to the album, so it is a ref very much an overall reflection yeah. of the band's, I guess you could say, um, mentality or mindset right. in, in 94, 95. Yeah, definitely. I was brought to my, uh, like, I was doing an interview the other day, and uh, something interesting came up. The guy said, you know, you wouldn't know that it was um, many people or everybody in the band writing the lyrics. You thought it w you would think it was coming from one guy because a lot of it mm, yeah. is very similar. I was going to say that, actually. Yeah, and I said, you know, I think a lot of that has to do is that we're constantly around each other. We're going through the same things. We're seeing the same things. We're experiencing the same things. So obviously it's in our own words, mm -hmm. but it all relates to a lot of the same uh, experiences, you know, and just the, the whole growth pattern we're all experiencing at the same time. A lot of similarities, so I think that's why. Because because the guy said it was a conceptual. No, it wasn't. You know, but it does. There's a lot of a, a common thread that runs throughout yes. the whole album. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you think that the uh, listener will get actually from listening to the lyrics and reading them and digesting them? Do you think that they can learn um, something themselves from that? I think they'll like my lyrics better out of all of them. No. <laughs> oh, let me tell. First fight of the tour, thanks to MTV. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I can recall uh, listening to bands like Rush and Marillion and, and Yes and, or, and Floyd and uh, growing up, like, really getting something out of the lyrics, you know, taking some of the quotes and writing them on my desk or notebooks or whatever. And uh, I think because some of the subject matter is interpreted in a... Um, it's analytical or it's philosophical that there are some things that, that the listener could get out of it you know and if we could just touch on your vocals james um it seems that you did really really push yourself on this record i think you you, you went to new um heights with your with your vocals um which song has given you the most satisfaction in that regard in your own personal performance i think the best song that represents where i was wanting to take the vocals was uh, it would be scarred that's my, it's my favorite song on the album, musically as well as my vocal performance. Um, but y the interesting is, is, a lot of people said, you know, like you've you've uh, you've changed your whole uh, vocal style. But before I met Dream Theater, and and they can vouch for this, uh, the demo tape that I sent them, I used to sing a lot like this. There'd be that raspiness in my voice, you know, and then I'd also do the crooning, which I always do, and then the high singing, clean 
and then the high singing in a raunchy, a raunchy voice. So it's not, it was just something that I guess when I went into do images and words, I just wanted to keep it one style and the producers were saying, no, keep it clean, you know, and, but with this one, I said, well, look, you know, I just want to take a whole different approach. I want to have it more, add more dimension, more dynamics to the songs. And I think that definitely it did add, add more of a dynamic feel, an emotional feel to the album. But it was great, you know, and, and who knows what I'll do the next album. You know, maybe I'll do Tiny Tim's uh, <laughs> vocal performance. I don't know. I think that shows um, more confidence on your part, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I just, you know, it's, there's, especially with this type of music, I say this a lot, but this is the ultimate band for a vocalist to be in, just because there's so much yeah. area in the music for the vocal vocalist to be so expressive that it's, it's you know, it's, it's the best, best situation, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll talk to the guys some more. We've got some more music on the way for you right now. And in fact, we've got another Dream Theatre video coming at you. And we're going to turn the clock back to uh, 1992 for another track from Images and Words. And uh, this has gone down very well on Headbangers for you. I know you're going to want to see it again. And you are, because it's coming up right now. This is Dream Theatre. And we are going to show you another day. Bands of the last year, that was a moist. Uh, with their new single, Silver. Brilliant yeah, stuff. Yeah, Canucks. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're Canadian, aren't you? Right, yeah. I, I mean, I just became aware of the band uh, as, as much as uh, the rest of the world, mm. but I, I never really heard of them before. So, so I get, have they been around for a while? Here, uh, no, just two years. No, yeah. I'll interview you. <laughs> yeah. Just two years? <laughs> two years. No, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Very much, Vanessa. Yes, good. <laughs> thank you. Well, we're going to talk about Dream Theatre now. It's the Headbangers Ball Dream Theatre European Tour Special coming to you from Munich. And uh, James and John are talking to me about the new album. And um, I think much has been made of the fact of the, the standard of musicianship in the band. Um, you know, I was wondering, why did you feel the need for um, outside producers? Um, you work with uh, Dwayne Barron and John Purdell. Um, you know, did you... I imagine you're the sort of band that has a very clear vision of what you want to do. What can a producer bring to the equation? Well, I, I think um, none of us are producers, you know. I think we'd be fooling ourselves if uh, we went into a record and thought we could record it ourselves. Uh, we need an objective ear, first of all, an outside ear that could, uh, you know, really listen uh, with fresh ears and, and maybe make some suggestions so far as melodies and, and uh, where everything is sitting. And also, technically, none of us really know about engineering. You know, we'd be lost in a studio. So, um, thus, we chose producers that would uh, accommodate, you know, getting great sounds as engineers, and also that we respected in their, uh, in the way that they perceive or their perspective of, of music. You know, mm -hmm. so. And also, John Prudell is a great musician. Yeah. Well, great I was going to say that you would need people who um, had that experience themselves. Oh, yeah. Definitely, even uh, Images and Words, uh, David Prater is a great drummer and singer and, y you know, even like simple things like when you're, you're playing a part and they have to know where to bring you in or whatever, it's like they have to be musically uh, adapted, you know. I mean, there are um, some instrumental passages on the album. Um, what did you feel that they added to the record? Because um, well, actually, when I was talking to Van Halen recently, they've got something similar going on on their record, and they said that they actually couldn't find any lyrics that would work, and that they, it was so good as an instrumental that it didn't need anything else. Is that what happened with you guys? Um, no, actually, when we write an instrumental or an instrumental section, we we go in knowing that it's going to be instrumental, and uh, I think it's just a different perspective. You know, having a um, guitar or keyboards or bass or whatever carry the voice of it. You know, it's also when, when we're playing and there's a vocal line going on, you, you have to really be aware of what's happening. You can't really go psycho and have these intricate things. So when we do instrumental parts, it's really anything goes. And we can do a lot of counterpoint and collective rhythms and stuff. And we don't have to worry about somebody trying to make out the lyrics, you know. A bit of a musical workout for you guys. I mean, James, when I've seen Dream Theater play live, um, there are lots of long passages of music uh, when you actually you actually have a chance to go off stage mm -hmm. and take a little break. Right. Um, how is that for you? Is that difficult to keep your energy level up? No, because uh, usually I'll, I'll go backstage and I just do a lot of stretching, walking around, just keeping myself loose. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, I'll just keep sipping back the water. But no, like I never let myself sit down because then I would, you know, I'd lose the whole drive. 
But no, I just keep walking around, and, and uh, actually, a lot of the times, I'll come back on and just watch them every night, you know, instrumentally, yeah. Well, um, we're going to catch up with the guys a little bit later on in the show, um, but we're going to just uh, let you go now for a while because uh, we're going to take a few steps back from the Dream Theatre European Tour. In the next part of the show, we're going to bring you an in-depth report on Bad Religion's album, Stranger Than Fiction, and we're also going to be hooking up with Dream Theatre's support band, Fate's Warning. And uh, those of you in the know will already know that there's quite a strong connection between the two bands because the uh, ex-keyboard player in Dream Theatre to Kevin Moore actually played on Fate's Warning, Fate Warning's 1989 album Perfect Symmetry and I think there's a few other connections between the two bands there as well. We'll find out more about that when we talk to the guys after the break but taking us into that break we are going to show you some more Dream Theatre live so stay tuned for Bad Religion they're coming up after the break. Six o'clock and it's time to kiss you from a dream Try to shake it up but it just won't stop I'm a straight but he's got promises to keep. Wouldn't you tell me before he sleeps? I may never get over, but never's better than now. I got faces to cover. Too late for me now I got faces to cover 